Well, hey, y'all. How y'all doing this evening? I am E with the Baby's Booty, and we are going to have some fun working with towels today, but the main thing with today's show is going to be questions and answers, okay? So if you have any questions, go ahead, drop them in the comments, uh, in the chat, and we will get to them, but I'm going to uh, work on a project of something I've been trying to do for a couple of weeks now. And that's a uh, towel project because I wanted to make a gift for my neighbor. All right. So what I decided we'll do is show you start to finish us working on this towel project, looping the towels because towels are so, 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 so easy. So easy to do. Anybody can do the towels and you can make good money off of the towels, right? So that's what we're going to do tonight. And, um, questions and answers mainly because this week has been a week of pain for me. So I haven't <laughs> gotten a whole lot together for us to do tonight. I was like barely able to walk this morning when I got up. I'm feeling much better now, but it comes and goes. So arthritis has been visiting me hard and heavy this week. So it's going to be a light thing we're going to do. I'm pretty much going to be rolling around in my chair tonight and dropping water all over the place. Um, so that's what we're going to do for our show tonight. But towels are a really simple, easy project to do. All right. And we'll go even into detail with cost of comparison and buying towels, what towels to buy, what kind of towels will work, depending upon what towel you get. Is it what design would work best on it okay so that's what we're going to get into tonight but before we get into that one of the things that i like to do as you all well know if you've been in this at that if you've been watching this channel for a while if you've been watching this channel for a while you already know that one of the things i like to do when we get started on our show is to say hi to the folks that join us live because if you guys didn't join us live, I wouldn't have a show. So we're going to pop over into the chat and say hi to everyone uh, that has joined us this evening. So I see joining in with us is Ms. Beckham, <laughs> first in line this morning, this evening. Good evening. How are you? Welcome. And thank you, Ms. Beckham, for being a YouTube Who group member. I definitely appreciate that. Inspiration Creations, Lori from Canada. Hello. How are you? Galena, hey, how are you doing this evening? Welcome, thank you for joining us. So Crafty is here, welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. I appreciate it. Um, Miss Presha, hello, welcome, and thank you very much as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I really appreciate that. EJ's daughter, good evening to you as well, and you, thank you as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We appreciate the support of the channel. Memberships are available for our channel here on YouTube. And what the memberships do is they actually not only give you super cool emojis to play with in the chat, you know. So those of you who have the emojis, go ahead and throw the bells in the chat for you all because without you all supporting the channel, those bells wouldn't be possible. But also, by being a member here, you have the opportunity to request your own bell. Um, you would just need to go to our website, click the little bell icon on our website and fill it out and request your own bell and we'll get that out to you. Um, and as a perk of being a member of the channel. And in addition to that, um, those who choose the captain's route, you have the captain's perk, which is a monthly project that we do together, which I'm running behind this month. So you captains, if you're in here, I will begin with you here shortly. Um, as a matter of fact, you will have a post this evening here on YouTube that will explain what our plan is for the monthly, um, perk this month. So I'll get back with you guys on that. So if you're interested in memberships, you can either click the join button, the little blue join button at the bottom of our chat. If you're on the computer, if you're not on the computer, if you're able to get, click on live chat, which will move the live chat out of the way and your description should be there. There should be a link in the description as well. If you're interested, we appreciate it. 
thank you. <laughs> Sherry Castro, hello, hello. How are you, girly tomboy chicks designs? Wow, nice. Hello, how are you? Good evening to you as well. So too, we begin embroidery. Hello, how are you, Miss Shirley? Welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop group member, we appreciate that as well. Marianne, hello, how are you, Mary? Hello, the Soy Brat, hello, Angelia Baker. She says hi, Eve, in the Hoop group. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the Soy Brat say hey, family. Hi, family. <laughs> Chris Smith, hello, how are you? Welcome. Linda Sarzuki, hello. Shamira, what up, girl? She say babies. She say honey bun, yes, look forward to it. Kingsbury Crafts. Simone Warren, I love Shamira. She coming here with the positive attitude. Absolutely love it. Simone Langley says, hello. She missed us for two weeks, but welcome back, my dear. We hate you were away for a while, but always a pleasure to have you back in with us. And thank you very much for being a YouTube Who Group member as well. I appreciate it. Dorothy Gaston here from STL. Welcome, welcome. Ms. Ellen. Oh, Miss El Miss Ellen Nicole. Miss L Nicole. Sorry. I can't it's the number is it's over there and my eyes are putting letters together, but even still, hi, how are you? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Contessa Harris, hello, thank you. She says she's been away as well. Welcome back. We appreciate you joining us back and letting us know that we missed you and you missed us. Thank you for being a YouTube Hooper member as well. Ms. Leela Nelson, hello, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Shirley says, hello, everybody. Ms. Willa Allen says, hello. Karen Morris, good evening to you as well. Girly Tomboy Chicks Design says, newbie here. Welcome. We appreciate you letting us know. Good beginner sewing machine for embroidery tools, hats, and small projects. Yes, yes. Loving, loving the request. Loving the request. So we'll definitely get into that. Galena says, got the chronic pain too, so you know the feeling. Sorry you're hurting. A lot of folks that I know that deal with chronic pain have been like suffering over the past couple of weeks. So I don't understand why. I've been doing really, 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 really well for the past, I'll say 16 months. So for this to come out the blue over the last two months has been crazy. I ain't had pain like this in a while. So, but it's a part of it and I already know how it goes and we just follow the routines and just go with it, girl. We got to, we make it work. <laughs> you have to make it work. Um, Alicia Parker, yes. Welcome to your first live. Thank you for joining us. Fresh out the box. We appreciate it. Suzanne, go green, go from Florida Space Coast. Hey, love. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for uh, being in here with us from Florida just about every week. We love it. So Crafty says, welcome, girly. Ms. Social Dale says, hi, everyone. Carmen Alvarado says, humidity is bad in Cali. It was bad here, too. But Ms. So Crafty, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Ms. Social Deb, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. And Carmen Alvarado, thank you very much as well for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Lori Campbell is here. Welcome. Wanda is here for first time. Wanda Temple, thank you for joining us this evening. Kimberly Martin Paschal, thank you so much for everything. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Um, SB is the name. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you being here. Good day to you as well. Pat, hi. How are you? Lisa, hello. Latanya York, hello. How are you? Ozzy, hola, chica. All the way from San Antonio, Tejas. Welcome from San Antonio. We like it down there too. <laughs> Takara, hello, how are you? Tamara Anderson, you'll be here first time actually seeing you live. Thanks for inviting from Michigan. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. You didn't have to be here, but we appreciate it. Jessica is here from Texas. Joanna is here. Welcome. Margaret Massey is here. Thank you. Glad to have you in here with our live as well. Maria Cologne, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us and for being a YouTube Who Group member. You've been for a long time. 2011, Ms. Max, hello, hello, welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. And Miss 143, Hot Sunday, she says, happy hot Sunday. <laughs> it was warm today, but I've been inside, so I felt the heat when I went outside to uh, get the dogs some fresh water out there and feed them. And I was like, oh my God, it is hot out here for pups. I'm going to have to bring y'all in. Uh, but Miss 143, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We appreciate it. Let's see who else we have. Look at all those bells and purple hearts. I love it. Y'all know purple my favorite color, though. <laughs> we had to do the purple 
emojis in here. Dana, hello. How are you? Colette, hello. How are you? Welcome. I'm trying to take care of myself. That's all I can do, girl. Lisa Griffin, K. Peru, Karak, Karak, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. My bell is on my sewing table by my, I, like, great addition to my room, EJ's daughter says. Congratulations. I'm glad you like your bell. So, yes, the bells do go out. It may take a while, depending upon how many I have in stock, but bells do go out. <laughs> Marissa Dandridge, hello. Leslie Thomas, I'm new here. What do you buy your blanks, Leslie? Um, let's see. It depends on what blanks it is. Uh, so if you're talking about embroidery blanks, it kind of varies, uh, to be completely honest, because I like to find, depending upon what I'm doing, if it's a project for myself, I like to find something convenient. So Amazon usually is my go-to. I ain't gonna lie, I love Amazon. Uh, but if it's a project for a customer, then I try to look for quality and affordability, you know, because I don't want to bop the customer upside the head with a $15 hand towel, you know, and be like, okay, well, it cost me 15, so it's gonna cost you 35 type situation. No, I like to, you know, offer for all budgets. Um, so I give them an option of some places where I'm pretty reliable about getting towels. Like, for instance, for me personally, when someone requests uh, bath towels, for instance, I just had a, a recent um, request for a family member uh, for some bath towels. My go-to place is Target for bath towels because, number one, I have yet to have a complaint with the quality of the towels from Target. Um, I don't get the most expensive ones there, but I do get the ones that are nice and soft. And those are the ones that I embroider on. These kitchen towels, let's get you switched over so that y'all can uh, see where we are over here. But the kitchen towels that we'll be working with today, these actually came from... Um, I just look like my camera ain't working. I'm going to check and see, but these towels came from amazon so we'll be working with those amazon towels tonight um and then it just depends walmart now if i'm getting towels just to practice on i go to walmart walmart is my go-to for my practice towels off gate so that's another option for me and then who else do i have it, it varies now there are some places like my cubbies like, for instance, my super sheet that we did here on the channel, super sheet. I got him from All Stitch. And All Stitch, there's a link for them in the description below. I absolutely love the cubbies. And they keep them, you know, pretty much on hand at all, all the different types that they have available. These are embroidery friendly. So you can take the little stuffing out him's booty. And when you take the stuffing out, um... It's a little like pillow that comes out, so it's easy to re embroider on him and restuff him, which is really cool because the pillow comes out of his head as well. And then you put it back in and zip it back up, and it's a really cute gift. Now, the other thing I like about these is because it's so easy to stuff him back, um, those that are handy with sewing, you could even open this just a little bit and stuff in like a jingly bell or chime, you know, for babies, and then stitch it back closed. So even if the stuffing came back out of it as the kid gets older, that bell is sewn inside, but it's still a nice little jingly project. And I've been meaning to put a chime in Super Sheet, but I just haven't had an opportunity to do so. But yeah, Super Sheet, we love him, and he's at All Stitch. Um, and the link, like I said, is in the description. So they have quite a few embroidery uh, blanks available there. So it just depends. Now, sublimation, we do dietrans.com in most instances. Uh, we're looking to add another vendor as well here soon. So super excited about that. Think about taking a trip uh, to go talk with them. But uh, we have quite a few things going on around here. And I try to keep you guys up to date on latest deals or where I find deals and stuff like that. And I try to post them in the Facebook group if I come across a really hot deal. So always check there as well. But depending upon what type of blank you're talking about, we can go into even more detail about that. Um, e. Glenn, hello, how are you? 
YouTube is off. I've been a Hoop group member since February, but it's saying second month, Miss Pressure. Don't worry about it because sometimes what happens is it'll reset. And that whole part of the YouTube memberships, I have no control over it. And a lot of times don't understand how they do certain things. But as long as y'all get your emojis, at the end of the day, I ain't really worried about it too much. Um, Dalsner, hello from Drew. Hello from Drew on the Gulf Coast. Hello, Drew. How are you doing this evening? If I can get my words right, I can I can greet you better. But hello, how are you doing? Nick Nick Nurse. Hey, love. How are you? Welcome. Michelle W. Hello. Penny. Hello. Andrea Love Stitches. Hello. How are you? Christina. Hello. Just got her a Cricut Explore Air 2. So for those of you who are new and aren't aware of this, we talked about the bell in the beginning. So you can request your own bell. But if you get a new baby, in a lot of instances, we get new stuff like new embroidery machines, new cutting machines, a new printer or a heat press, something like that. And it's just like your family doesn't really understand the excitement behind getting that kind of stuff. So here on our channel, we celebrate these new babies and we want to celebrate with you. And we do that by ringing our purple bell. So Christina, congratulations on your new Cricut Explore Air 2 color. Congratulations! Cricket Explore Air 2 in the house. We like cutting up stuff, don't we? So please, whenever you get to work on a project, let us know. Put it in the Facebook group so that we all can look at all the beautiful things that you create with your new Cricket Explore. We like cutting machines around here. Got a couple of them sitting over there ready to work for us. Then we have, oh my gosh, I gotta get to the I done missed a lot of stuff. We've been talking too long. Let's see. Uh, Elsa, hello. How are you? Welcome. Arthur Lewis, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Melody Wilcox is ringing the bell. Let's see. Carmen says, my hubby bought me a new baby for me. Juki DDL 8700 Industrial Sewing Machine. Congratulations on your new Juki. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Colors. She going to be sticking up some stuff. <laughs> Congratulations on your Juki. That's what's up. That's what's up. Those industrial machines are noise. Um, I was supposed to be going to go pick up one, but I have yet to go do it, which is a darn shame. But I really kind of at this point don't have room for it. So I got to figure out where I'll put it. But we got us one somewhere. Louise, hello from Texas. Welcome. Karen, welcome. You got another surgery today. Congratulate. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let us know what surgery you got. We like to ring for specific stuff. So, Karen, let me know what surgery. <laughs> let me know what kind of surgery you got. Is it a brother surgery? Is it a singer surgery? So we can holler correctly. Uh, Marge Campbell says, don't forget the thumbs up button. Thank you very much. Kalinda from California. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Misty Purple One. Deanna from Chicago. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Joanne Lee. Welcome. Marge Campbell says she's in the South Plains of Texas. That's not too terribly far, but we love Texas anyways. Hey, Sheila Cushenberry. She says she's on her way to Virginia. That's right. You said you were headed down to Virginia. Let me know when you make it there safely and safe travels, please. Willie Roseman. Hello, Michelle W. Hello. Um. Oh, you're in the Memphis, Tennessee? No, quite a few folks. There's a place in Memphis. Is it Memphis? Pretty sure it's Memphis. Hold on. Let me get my, my mind right. Pretty sure it's Memphis. I'm going to look it up. But there's a vinyl and blank supply store in Murfreesboro, if I'm not mistaken. That's not too terrible. If I'm thinking of my cities right in Tennessee, and I'm going to have to tell you where that is. They are really nice. I absolutely love those folks down there. They were uh, a lot of fun when I stopped in there. Uh, Miss Ethel Smith says, good evening, ladies. Good evening to you as well. So Crafty says she purchased the We Are Memory Keepers HP Printmaker. Never heard of it, girl. That's cute. Make sure you post a picture on Facebook so I can see what it is. Congratulations on your print. Printmaker. <laughs> Congratulations, ma'am. That's awesome sauce. Let us know what the printmaker does in the uh, Facebook group. We would love to see that. Andrea Love Stitches says, my go-to for bath towels is JCPenney. 
we only have one here in Charlotte and that one is a little bit away from me so I don't really go to JCPenney too much but I'll have to check them out next time I'm out that way um Miss Precious says she does Target as well Lila Nelson says yes not, they are large towels for a very reasonable price mm -hmm. Um, Maria says a good place to buy quality towels at a reasonable price is Tuesday morning. I haven't been to Tuesday morning in a while. Every time I go in there, my my, my wallet is sad because I end up broke. Tuesday morning is nice. I absolutely love it, but woo, child. I went there. I got my, my window treatments in the living room from there. I got some seasoning. I mean, you can get some like anything from Tuesday morning. I do like Tuesday morning. <sighs> you gonna make me go to Tuesday morning. That sucks. <laughs> These La Facion, Donna Cooper. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Thanks for joining us. So, you guys, I want to make sure. Uh oh, wash your hands. Got a new brother serger. Congratulations to wash your hands. Holla. <laughs> Congratulations on your new serger. Come on, Bill. You gotta cooperate. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss what that other serger was because somebody else said they got a new serger. Um, let me see. Let me see. Oh, I hope you feel better, Miss Becca. I, you know, I'm I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. The Kimberly Martin says, Tennessee in the house. I need to know if that's a fact. You need to know what's a fact. Because <laughs> we love uh, Tennessee around here, too. Tennessee and Texas. Debbie D, hello. Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube group member. We appreciate that. Um, let's see, let's see. Are you from Chicago? Esther R says, I'm not from Chicago. I'm not. Um, never been. I need to go, but I've never been. Karen Murray says, it's a brother 1034 D surgery to replace a 33 year old singer surgery to be used next to my Juki surgery. One for regular surgery and one set to roll him. Woo! Surgery! Holla! <laughs> Congratulations, Karen Murray. We like surgeries too. Now, the one that I have, I don't get to use it very often. I need to get back into using, uh, doing regular sewing, y'all. I really, really do. And I got a project in mind, but I'm kind of nervous about it. Uh, Alicia Parker says she's excited about upgrading from the Topaz 50 to a Brother PR650. Did you get it there? Is it there? Did you get the machine or are you planning to get it? Uh, Debbie D says she also got the printmaker. To, oh, y'all gonna have, we gonna look up this printmaker. Hold on. Congratulations Woo! on your printmaker. <laughs> Congratulations, y'all. I'm gonna look this printmaker up. Y'all got me uh curious. Let me make sure. Hey, Embroidery Diva, how are you? And then I want to go back to the other questions that was asked at the beginning. But first, let me open up a web page so that we can see what this printmaker. Because I don't know what y'all talking about and. I like knowing what new stuff is, even though I'm a little nervous because y'all know how things go around here. You said memory keepers. Can I spell? Keepers printmaker. All right. So let me get y'all. Where did it go? Oh, it's right here. Let me get y'all switched over to the desktop so that you can see. What I see. Okay, so the Memory Keepers Printmaker. Is this what you oh, need? Oh, is that the thing that, um, I've been seeing that on, uh, gosh, not TikTok, or is it TikTok? I can't remember. It's like a really quick, quick video where he prints on anything. User guide, video tutorials. Oh, that's pretty cool. Then, you know, they, they, Took that, not took it, but let's click here because I want more information. User guide, video tutorials. I don't have very much on it, but we'll look. Oh, neat. You can do the shoelaces. You can print on, I guess that's like a zipper pouch. It looks like they probably printed on a calendar and everything. That's pretty cool. Ribbon, envelopes, cards. That's pretty cool. So for those of you who have it, what do you plan to do with it? That's pretty cool looking. Something, something new, something neat. Leslie Thomas starting to embroider with my brand new brother NQ1600E. I'm a little scared. Any advice? Um, we got plenty of advice for you, Miss Leslie Thomas. The um, 
embroidery machine is a lot of fun and start simple start simple because you don't have to go all out and do all this phenomenal stuff it's just pick the simplest projects my favorite to tell people to start with towels and we'll get into the reason for that now Christina Brown says, thank you for bringing the bell. Me and the daughter and all starting our own business, making t-shirts and mugs. Need advice on getting it going good. Um, definitely promote. Promotion, promotion, promotion. Um, make a few things and then have friends and family that support you pretty good wear it. And uh, it will sell itself eventually because, especially if it's something that people like and uh, want to get into. So girly tomboy chicks designs says so she's a newbie as well um, and wants to know about good beginner sewing machines for embroidery for tools, hats, and small projects. Now, that kind of goes hand in hand with Christina, I'm sorry, Leslie Thomas and what you're talking about with your new embroidery machine. So the embroidery machines that I generally, oh, Lord, I didn't even change the screen back. Let's change the screen. Actually, let's change it to this one. So this is one of the machines that I like to suggest. Um, you can go with the, this is the PE770. So it's the Brother 5x7 embroidery machine. Um, they also have the 800 is the newest version of this, if I'm remembering correctly. Now, they also have other model numbers with these um, embroidery machines but the at the end of the day is five by seven is the largest size that it will do and that's a really good um really good flexible embroidery size where you can get quite a few projects done with the five by seven and to be completely blunt very rarely do i venture off into using much larger than the five by seven which is funny but even because I have the, um, because I have the multi needle machines, yes, I do use the multi needle machines. But just because I use multi needle machines, don't mean that that's my go to at all times. So for me, five by seven and less is usually what I do most of my projects in. Okay, so if you do have Let's see, what did, what machine did she say? You mentioned the NQ1600E. What's your largest size hoop on yours? Now, dealer step up from the PE800. Okay, got you. So you can go a little bit bigger. You're welcome, Andrea. You can go a little bit bigger. So that's a good thing. Miss Social Deb, yes. Sam's Club does have awesome towels. Now that's somebody else I forget about. Sam's is a good option too. Uh, but 5x7 is pretty normal, uh, pretty normal size. You can get quite a bit done. As a matter of fact, your hoop size, you know, this, this isn't a small area to sniff at. You know, you can get a good bit out of this. So towels, the reason why I normally suggest towels is because whenever we embroider on towels in a project, Usually when we embroider on towels, we'll open up a towel and then we'll embroider something like right here, for instance. Okay, that's all well and good. Uh, but when you're practicing, when you're practicing, what I suggest is get an El Cheapo, well, not necessarily El Cheapo, but get a, a inexpensive towel from Walmart. Maybe a dollar seventy-five is what I think those uh, bargain basement towels are. And start embroidering here. Okay, and then when you practice, put a design on there, see how it turns out. If you like it, then you're good. You can do that same type of design with towels. But if you don't like it, move over here, embroider again, practice up here, embroider there. Then the funny thing is, it's a towel. So even if the embroidery is horrible, messed up, bobbin showing, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. It's a towel. You can always use a towel to wipe the dog's paws when you come in out the rain or wipe up spills in the kitchen or whatever the case may be because the towel is always going to be useful even with botched embroidery on it. So that's why I usually suggest towels. And it's forgiving. It's, it's really forgiving. You can hoop your towel or you don't have to hoop your towel. It's entirely up to you. I prefer to hoop my towels. 
Uh, but that's just me. That's how I do my towels. So towels is a uh, project that I suggest to start with if you've never done embroidery before. And then I also have videos on in the hoop projects um, that can go as small as four by four that are really easy to do. Oh my gosh, you can crank those kind of projects out easily and make a little bit of pocket change if you wanted to with that particular or those particular projects. So there's quite a few options available uh, for embroidery out there that we can do. Now I'm having issues with my one camera and I'm not sure why it's acting up that will show the the table back there because I was gonna hoop the towel and let you guys see it, but I'm gonna check and make sure there's some other questions out here. Your hoop is a six by 10. Oh, that's nice and big. So you'll find out that there's a lot of things that you'll end up going back to your five by seven for. Um, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of things that are bigger than five by seven uh, would be maybe bath towels or blankets or, I mean, what else usually name some stuff y'all that are that you would want a bigger embroidery area for but like aprons usually an apron is like shirt size you don't want to go too much bigger than that um hats are small so a lot of things is um a lot of things you will keep smaller than five by seven Ms. Zell Nicole says she's got a new Silhouette Cameo 4, a pink one. Fancy. <laughs> Congratulations. Woo! Silhouette 4, Silhouette 4. Nice. What kind of uh, projects you plan on doing, Ms. Zell Nicole? Let us know. I'm, not, I'm saying that right. I hope so. Shirley Scott. I don't have an embroidery machine, but I'm looking what is a good one to start out with again. The 770 is an excellent one. If you can't afford, now see, the 770 shot up in price during COVID because everybody and their grandma was getting into doing sewing and embroidery and home projects because they were at home. So the price of it shot up. It used to be eh, seven, five, five, not 500, about 600, 700. It was right about in that area. It is shot up to $1,000. So if you can find one affordable, like on Marketplace or something like that, um, it's an excellent, excellent embroidery machine. Uh, but aside from that, the 4x4 embroidery machine is nice as well. Because that's what I started out with. Um, I ended up with one and was doing so well with the one. I bought two more and was running three of them doing projects at one point in time. So the 4x4 embroidery machine is an excellent little machine as well. So if Ordinarily, I would suggest the 4x4, four four, depending on your budget. So if your budget is really limited and you're like, okay, four, 450 is about the most I can afford, I can't afford more than that, then the 4x4 four four embroidery machine is the route I would say to go. And a lot of times you can find it even less than that. Now that's brand new price, but you can a lot of times find it for about $200, 250 on Marketplace or OfferUp or something like that. Uh, because a lot of times they end up doing the 4x4 four four and they like it, so they upgrade. Or they end up saying, okay, embroidery is just too much. I don't want to do this anymore. And they sell it. Okay, so that's the the machine that I generally would recommend because it's a, a smaller amount to invest and decide whether or not embroidery is for you. Okay, and the, if you get into it and you like it, then upgrade beyond that. But if you can afford right at $1,000, then the 5x7 embroidery machine would be an excellent place to start because the 5x7 area gives you a lot more flexibility to try a lot more projects that are out there and available online. So what that does is really test whether or not you're interested in getting into embroidery or not. Okay, so if you decide even after getting the five by seven that embroidery is not for you, then it's an excellent resale machine. So you don't have to worry about losing all of your money because it holds its value right now. They're holding well above their value um, that at, from what we've seen in the past. So those are the machines that I would say start with. 
Now, if you have the funds to go industrial, but then again, like I said, it's better for you to do the single needle, small home embroidery machines to get your feet wet, so to speak, see if you like it. And then if you do switch over to your multi-needle and industrial machines. So that's what I generally suggest. Um, thank you for bringing it in. Okay, we said that. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything. Miss Beckham said she was looking at the memory keepers for the grandchildren and wanted to see if you could find someone that would give an honest review. So yeah, if you guys grab that, let us know how it works for you. Um, especially in the hoop group, we can talk about it in there. Um, EJ's daughter, she got her 770 used last summer. What do you think? Do you like your 770? Let us know. <laughs> Maria says, I almost forgot. I also brought a Cricut Explore Air as well. Congratulations, Maria. Woo! Congratulations. Golly, is that the number two Cricut Explore? Y'all killing the cutting game in here, buddy. I tell you what. Do you use a denim needle in the seven? No, I did not ring the bell for you, so I'm glad I did. Uh, do you use a denim needle in the 772 embroider on denim? I need to make a personalized bag. Um, EJ Zara, you can. You definitely can uh, because denim is a very thick, dense material. Now, they do have some thin denim, but if it's, the you know, your basic jean material, then yes, you can put a jeans needle, denim needle, or it's the 100 slash 100 slash, I want to say it's 16. I think it's 16 slash 100 size needle. Um, but the denim needle, yes, you can use in the embroidery machine without any issues. Sheila Cushenberry, my granddaughter Bailey said, hey, hi Bailey, how are you? Welcome. Thanks for joining us with your grandma. Hope you have fun traveling. Even uh, Sondoris is saying hey to you, Bailey. <laughs> you got other folks saying hey. Um, Let me go back up. So I did not forget. I plan to use the printer. Okay, so Crafty says, I plan to use the printer and maker with all of my card making. Thank you, labels for my creations, ribbons for gifts, etc. So that's pretty neat. I'm going to look into it and see if I can't find one. Um, right now, I'm actually in the market for a mixer, so making cakes. <laughs> Not for sale or anything like that, but I've gotten into making pound cakes. So that's a whole different area. Once I get my mixer, then we'll switch back over to buying crafts, though. <laughs> So we'll see how that goes, girl, because I got a sour cream pound cake that'll make you slap somebody. Diane McCoy, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. We appreciate it. Uh, hey, Miss Crafty Creations, how are you? Maddie Washington from Boston, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Andrea says pillowcases. Pillowcases are easy to embroider on as well the only thing about pillowcases is you have to make sure you hoop it properly because if you stretch it any you will have puckering all those pillowcases um miss pressure i have the nq 1600e do they have a hat hoop for that the hat hoop for the nq 1600e is kind of universal for the 4x4 embroidery machine and the 5x7 machine but if you use it on the 5x7 machine they just want you to use the 4x4 hoop and the um, hat hoop for that is the aftermarket um, hat hoop that's available on Amazon. So I don't particularly favor it, so to speak. But we did uh, a video, a live. What was that, y'all? We did the live on doing hats a couple of weeks ago, if it wasn't last week. And it will show you how you don't absolutely have to have this. To embroider on hats so you can get it it can help but you don't absolutely have to have this okay um let's see make sure i'm not missing anything so that we can switch over to hoop in this towel what do you think about the se 1900 i'm leaning toward that for a beginning machine let's take a look at it and see what the 1900 is um that is a five by seven embroidery machine so the se 1900 basically is the let me make sure i'm telling you right hold on hold on 
it's a thousand dollars so it's probably the same as the 770 what is the largest boot size it looks like the five by seven um yep five by seven so the se 1900 basically is the exact same machine as what's sitting over here uh beside me so one of the things that you'll find out they have different model numbers um what the se like you're saying se 1900 whereas this is the pe 770 the se instead of it being pe the se means it's sewing and embroidery okay so the se 1900 is a really good machine and it will also double as an additional um sewing machine if something ever happens to your sewing machine you can use the se uh wash your hands walmart has the brother pe 770 for 620 wow did not know that that's very good knowing that it's going back to the regular price will you be able to do a class on the cricket maria says um it depends what are we talking about doing on the cricket um are we talking about doing um vinyl rhinestones i have several oh you're not looking at me i have several rhinestone um cricket videos so let us know what you're looking at doing on the cricket and we'll see about putting some classes together it, we haven't had a class in a while i think it would be fun to do a class on something because it's time to uh get back to the grind miss beckham what does your shirt say oh uh i found this design on um found this design on uh etsy and i got fluff on here i don't know i look like i ran into a bird um i thought this was absolutely cute so i it resonated with my soul and so i said yeah i, I like that and i think i want that on a shirt so i thought that was pretty cool because sometimes for as far as i'm concerned for me being a boss is a good thing that's not saying it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. Um, but when you lead, you teach and show by example and you motivate. And so that's why I was like, I mean, bosses can, can do that too. But a lot of time a boss is just over and they can kind of like control what's going on with their business and stuff like that. But as a leader, it's more than just owning a business. It's more setting the example. And that's, I don't know that that's the what I took from it and was like, oh, you know what? I really like that. I'm gonna put that on a shirt. And so that's what I did. <laughs> um, let us see. Sundora says, I want a bigger hoop. What machine do you have? What's the largest size hoop you have, Sundoras? Because there is the repositional hoop that's an option as well. So don't discount yourself. Um, because even the five by seven embroidery machine, you can get the repositional hoop that takes it from five by seven to five by twelve. So you were right at 12. So you can go much bigger than five by seven. Um, but with a four by four, you can go from four by four to four by six and a half, roughly something like that. Uh, so repositional hoops are very helpful. Nakomi Butler. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Let me see. I saw another question. Um, thanks. I'm excited. I'm starting with making drawings on my tablet and creating stickers that match my embroidery designs. That would be cute. That would be totally adorable. So definitely post pictures of your soon to be stickers. Uh, EJ's daughter loves her 770. That's what's up. How much pocket money can I make with a PE 770? Well, that depends on what you're making. All right, so let's let's delve into that a little bit because I did mention that I was going to show the towels that I got. So let's go on to Amazon, for instance, and let's take a look at some kitchen towels. Let me get you guys switched over. Really do this to here. Can't see. All right. So, actually, you know what? Let's move it to this one so that I'm not in the way. Okay. So, here we have Amazon. And, unfortunately, I shop all the time. So, I got a ton of stuff in my viewing history. So, yeah, that's not 
attention. But let's go to kitchen towels. Okay. So you're asking how much can you make with uh, your 770. Now keep in mind 770 is a 5x7 embroidery field. So most of these hand towels, you will be able to do embroidery on it. Now, this is just one thing. This is just one area of embroidery uh, money making that you can get into. So you can do flower sack towels. Those are my favorite, only because I'm not adept at using them because they're so thin. I, I'm used to fluffy. <laughs> so I look for fluffy towels. And then you have microfiber, which those are nice too. Um, but you want to find, like, for instance, here's some bar map, bar mop towels, which is pretty much what I have right here beside me. And it's a pack of 12. Okay. So for 12 towels, you get a towel that is 16 by 19 size towels. They come in a variety of colors. It's entirely up to you what color you want to get. So say, for instance, you go with basic white, right? And you get 12 towels for $14. So that means they're just over a dollar a towel. All right. So you got your embroidery machine. You got your towels. You can grab these towels right here. Now, what I was going to show you guys today is here is Embroidery Library. I get a lot of designs from Embroidery Library. They have a sale on their designs every week. They get a collection of designs that they put on sale. And most of them are in the, you know, $2 range and, and it can vary. So if you wanted to put a design on that towel, let's go back to that towel so I can point something out. You see how that towel has a nap to it. So you can, there's a, slight squish factor. I, I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> so the nap stands up from that towel. So you, you can't go with a design that's super stringy like this one. Okay. So these little fine stitch lines, sketch lines will not translate well on a towel. It will show up. It will show up, but it won't show up as well as it would if the surface was not a pile, like a kitchen towel. I mean, uh, Ah, uh, we just looked at it. Flower sack towel. Flower sack doesn't have a pile to it. Okay. So let's go back to the design. So that one's not a good design. This one would fill in really well because there's no space in between these stitches. So a design like that would work perfectly. But what I like to suggest with, actually, let's do it this way because they actually have a category for towels. So let's go designs by category. And we are going to go with home decor. And then I think this is the right place. Let me make sure. So they have his and her towels, but that's not what we want. We want towel toppers, towel, towel toppers. Towel toppers are cool too. Now the towel toppers are really cool actually, but we'll have to come back to that. Uh, where are the kitchen towels? Food and wine. I can't remember what the kitchen towels are. So let's go up here. We're going to type in kitchen towels. All right. So here they are. Most of these like this one is perfect for the uh, flower sack those line drawings are so that's why a lot of these are showing that because kitchen towels generally um people use the flower sack but like this one even this keep warm and snuggle up but what i'm trying to find it up oh, that's cute this would work and sell <laughs> that would actually sell hang on let me let me let me switch this real quick listen when you when you try to find something to make money it has to resonate with a wide array of people i'm i'm a i'm a be i'm always up front but definitely up front about this when you get into doing embroidery let's let's speak for real for real 
Matter of fact, I'm going to switch off of this. For real, when you're looking to get into doing embroidery to make money, the main mistake I made, the main mistake I made in getting into embroidery and trying to make money off of it was I would go on websites like this one and I'd be like, oh, that's so cute. Let me get that one. Oh, that's cute. Let me get that one. If I showed y'all my embroidery library folder, actually I have more than one embroidery library folder on my computer that holds my embroidery library designs. Out of, I dare say, and I'm being very modest, when I say out of 500 designs, I think I might have used six to sell stuff. The rest of them, I was like, ooh, I can use that and I can put it on pillows and make money. Ooh, I can use that and I can put it on towels and make money. But those are designs I like. And it doesn't necessarily mean other folks is going to like it. In addition to that, I'm going to show you something else that a lot of people don't think of when they're considering doing embroidery for hire or for money, okay? Let's switch back because you, you, I'm glad you brought that up because this is, this is really important for folks to understand. And for the people who've been doing embroidery for a while, they'll be able to back me up on this. I know they will because I was, I didn't think of it at the time, but now I know better. So as I mentioned, this design here is absolutely perfect for putting on a towel. It'll resonate with a wide range of people. Doesn't matter the person's race, doesn't matter their religion, doesn't matter none of that. Every woman knows, or man in a lot of instances, in their kitchen you're not going to use my kitchen towel as a paper towel. <laughs> you're just not going to do it. So this is an excellent design to use that will be whimsical. People will like it. It's funny. The stitching, the lettering is thick. The lettering is thick. So this is perfect for a towel with a nap on it. Okay. So what it'll do is stitch the nap down. And it will show up really well in a fluffy towel. You could even put this on some of those thick um, hand towels from like Target because that would show up that well. But the other point that I didn't think of, that I did not think of when I was getting into doing embroidery for hire or, or trying to find designs that I could use and translate into making money out of the embroidery. So when you get into doing embroidery, you have to buy the, the blank, which in this instance, the towel, you have to buy your thread, you have to buy your bobbin, um, you have to have your machine, you need your stabilizer with towels. What I was going to do in this instance with the towel today is use water soluble stabilizer um, because you can use tear away stabilizer on the back of towels, but I figured the water soluble should work just as well. Um, so you can, um, you need to get your stabilizer, but back up to the thread, back up to the thread. What a lot of times we forget is your, your money that you have to spend in order to create whatever it is that you're trying to sell. Your thread is involved. Why would I even bring that up? Let's go back to, to this. With this design, this is the other reason why I like, uh, embroidery library. Look right here. For this design, this is for a 4.36 by 9.37 design, okay? So this will not fit in a 5 by 7 hoop. So let's drop down and go to a 5 by 7 friendly design, which is right here. So you can do a 3.19 by 6.86 design, which is the maximum for your 5 by 7 hoop. So you can choose that, but they're cool enough to where they even offer a 4 by 4 design. So for even of you folks who have a four by four embroidery machine, you can still do this design. But let's go back to the five by seven because that's what I'm working with right now. So this design, five by seven, is three dollars and ninety nine cents. It's not on sale. But look right here. Additional details. Fourteen thousand two hundred thirty nine stitches. Yeah, not a lot of stitches. Um, let's go to the view color change sheet. What I kind of try to do for a rule of thumb 
is for about every 500 stitches, count about a minute. Count about a minute. The reason why I say that, your, your brother's single needle embroidery machines can do maximum, most instances, 600 stitches a minute. But not all the time. Like when you're doing satin stitches, the machine slows down. So you're not getting 600 stitches a minute. So you're not going to do 600 stitches per minute in most instances. So that's why I say average 500 stitches a minute. So for every 500 stitches, I would say count a minute. So this is 14,000 stitches. So let's bring out the calculator because y'all know how I am with math. And when you bring out the calculator, so cut 14 in half. Ugh, I'm learning. I'm learning. But 14,000 stitches that's 1400 divided by 500. Uh, you're looking at 28 minutes. Okay, that's not right. It's not gonna be 28 minutes. I counted that wrong, but you know what I'm getting at. We 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 getting y'all know how I am with math. I ain't gonna worry about that right now because that's a minor detail, but it's gonna be a major one here in a second. So let's click right here under additional details. This is how many stitches, but view color change sheet. This is the point I'm trying to make. So when we click on the color change sheet, embroidery library lays it all out for you. How many changes, unique color used, unique colors used. You have obsidian and you have choke, choke cherry. And these are Madeira color numbers. So you don't have to use these colors, but it's saying unique colors used for this project. They're saying two. Color thread changes. They're saying two different color thread changes. So easy peasy mac and cheesy. Easy towel to stitch out. Only 14,000 stitches. So it should stitch fairly quickly. You only have two color changes. So you only have to buy two different colors of thread. And black basically is one of them. So you really don't even have to buy black. Because most of us have black and most of us have white. So now that we know that, I'm going to go here. And let's find another one. I'm actually going to go back to home decor, decor and I'm going to go to his and her towels only because, um, and let's find a different design. So let's say this is cute, the little scrub bucket, and it's simple enough. You think a wash tub would be cute? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Mustache and lips. He isn't hers. So let's go to his towel. His towel, five by seven. Again, go down 23,000 stitches for this one. Color change sheet. This shows one, two, three different color changes and three different unique colors. Okay. So keep that in mind. I'm pointing all of this out for a reason. Let's go to. This one, this is hers. Five by seven. This one fits a five by seven hoop. How many stitches in this design for the five by seven? You got 23,000 stitches. Color chain sheet. Look at this. This is this is for the hers design. Unique colors used. One, two, three, four, five, six different colors. Okay, so you're gonna have to buy six different colors. Spools of thread. All right. But come back up to the thread changes. You have 13 different thread changes. So just because you have six colors, 23,000 stitches, you have 13 different times that you're going to have to change the thread on the machine to stitch out that design. So when you're looking at doing this design let's back up and add the cart so that i can get to it quicker so when you're looking at doing this design with just two color changes even if even if we had a leopard but fourteen thousand stitches number one is less stitches but number two you're only talking about two color changes so think of the time that you're saving and dealing with that now looking at this one yeah it's cute and all but look at all the color changes that you're going to have to do. So think about it from the standpoint of, of work, okay? If you go into your job tomorrow, 
if you have a, a regular nine to five job, or even if you didn't, at some point in time, you worked a job. And when you go into your job, when you walk in the door, you have reports left over from the last business day. You have outstanding projects that haven't been done yet and need to be started. And you just got a ton of work sitting there facing you. You're going to be stressed, overwhelmed, whatever the case may be. But if you had a job in comparison where you go in and for the most part, everything's done. All you got to do is go in, log in, see if there's work. Usually there's not. Wait on work to come in and do work. It's less workload on you for less color changes, less spools of thread that you have to buy. So theoretically, this towel right here with the hers, not just because she has more stitches, is a little less than 10,000 more stitches, but look at all the different investment that you'll have to make in this one towel you gotta buy all of these six spools of thread well we already have white so you gotta buy five spools of thread but then you gotta sit there and change colors back and forth over and over a lot of times we don't think of that so when you price out a towel his and hers how do you come up with your price so generally we say a thousand i'm sorry a dollar per thousand even though now they're going up to like a dollar fifty per thousand, but even still, it's up to you. A thousand per stitches, yeah, that works. But a thousand per per a dollar per thousand, when you have to do all these color changes and invest in all these different color spools of thread, versus a dollar per thousand when it's only two color changes and two spools of thread, which one of that dollar makes more sense? You see what I'm saying? I probably over talked and told you too much. Not told you too much, but probably said too much to try and make a point. My point is when you're getting into embroidery, understand that not all jobs are the same. They're not all going to be the same. But if you're trying to do this to make money, find designs that are more user friendly as far as you putting out the work. So imagine you have a booth that you're getting ready to go and put these towels in. Are you going to want to sit and do all those color changes to those towels and put them in your booth and have 10 towels sitting there waiting on somebody to buy or the towel with only two different color changes? That's the point I'm trying to get at. So when you're looking to get into deciding what you're going to do to make money, you really need to think because when you come on to this website and you're seeing all these super cute designs, because I promise you, new this week. These are all new this week. They have a lot of really nice designs. Oh, that's super cute. They have, like, this is, this is, this design, right now it's $2.80, but you got 103,000 stitches on this design. 103,000 stitches. Let's look at the color change sheet. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had to scroll a color change sheet. Look at the look at the color changes. 40 different color changes with this design. And you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10, 20 different spools of three that you would need to have on hand to stitch out this design. 20. This embroidery machine is a 15 needle embroidery machine. So I still have five spools of thread that I'm eventually going to have to change out in order to stitch this design. Okay. So these are the things that you really want to keep in mind. You know, you might come on here and be like, oh my God, $2.80, that's a great design. This would work. I could sell this because the holidays are coming up. Okay, yeah, you can, but look at how long you're going to be sitting at that embroidery machine, switching threads back and forth, and trying to get this stitched out on how many towels that you're going to have sitting in your booth in hopes, in hopes that you sell it. You might not even sell the towel. So imagine how sick you'll be you stitch all this out on them towels and the towels don't even say it. Okay. Now, on the flip side, something like this design, much easier. It's cleaner. Very simple. 
not much to it. And you still, it's still 33,000 stitches. Wait a minute. No, that's six and a half by 11. Let's go five by seven. Five by seven. You're still, okay, 16,000 stitches. And you only got one color that you're dealing with. Just one color. Two color stops, but one color that you're dealing with. Okay. Let's go back. New this week. I'm going to show you something else that you want to keep in mind too. Especially if you, if you shop this site like I do. I'm going to show you the latest thing that they've been doing to try and help offset some of this extra stitching, right? So look at these designs. Look at how it's airy. There's space. This will still work for a cow. This really will because the, the although the stitching is has space in it, but what that does is that makes a lightweight stitch out. It's not super stitch coverage intensive. So you're doing less stitches, so to speak, and it's airier, so easier to stitch out. This one is not five by seven. Nope, that's not five by seven. This one is five by seven, and this one is 23,000 stitches, four different colors, four different color changes. Okay. So keep that in mind. Leela Nelson on the, her design, she, you could do the crown and all go and not have all the color changes. You could. So yes, you can adapt and, and change certain things to make it easier for you. But that eliminates, let's see, what's that look like? About two different colors in that design. No, it looks like it might be one, two, three, four ish different colors in that design. So that would eliminate four. No, two, sorry, two, two colors. It takes out the, these two colors right here. So that would leave four spools of thread, but you still have color changes and stuff that you got to do. Why does the red tree need a color stop if only one color is needed? I think because, let's go back to it. Nine times out of ten, what it is is the wording that was in the middle. Come on. That was just there. I think. Nope. Oh, okay. So, see how this is clean and open? It could be that there's... No, that shouldn't be it because there's a jump from here to there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Yes, I did, girl. Yes, I did. <laughs> Hate to will. Um, so yeah, there's there's I don't know why they have two different color changes in that I don't, I don't even know. I'd have to download it and, and look at it to see why. But for whatever reason they have color changes in here. So just keep that in mind, you guys, because uh this was like, oh my god, look at this design. This cute but this is you know the type of stuff that I was like oh I love it it's adorable I want to buy it I want to make towels out of it okay but I'm saying I love it that doesn't mean it's gonna make me money you know this one five by seven 27 sorry 28 thousand stitches basically and for the color change sheet but look you only got three colors so this actually would be a really good design to get that would you know, make a really decent turnover uh, for you. So I absolutely love their sketch type designs like this because it's not a lot of fill in that ends up, you know, sucking down a bunch of stitches. That's the word I was trying to get to. I thought this was cute too. So, you know, because my neighbor, she does farming. So I thought that would be cute for her. So if we went five by seven here, let's look at the amount of colors that I would be doing because I love my neighbor so much. Let's do the color change sheet. Unique colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 different colors to stitch that out. So keep that in mind. That was something I did not think of. Now, on the flip side of that, no, flip side, same side of that, What's one of the main things folks holler when they get their five by seven machine? Somebody even said it in here. You get your you get your your four by four machine, or you get your five by seven machine, 
And then the baby's booty comes on live and she's showing you all this cool stuff and she's showing off, look, this is a 15 needle embroidery machine. You can go as big as 22 inches wide, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And what do you say? Oh man, I want a bigger hoop. I want to be able to stitch bigger. Okay. Yeah, you can. You, we gonna show you what stitching bigger does for you. Okay. So let's come and we're gonna go to. Let's see. Let's go Southwest Wonders. This was a couple of weeks ago. Really cute design. I absolutely love that. The other thing I like about Embroidery Library is they have designs that get pretty big. Okay, so like this one, the Buffalo Desert Scene. You can go 11 by 7 on this particular design. They have quite a few that, that very few are bigger than this. Very few are bigger than this. And we'll show you a different take on this as well. Okay, so 11 by 7 is the biggest that this design is in. You're looking at 80,000 stitches, 81,000 stitches. So let's look at the color change sheet. Not a whole lot of color, so that's a good thing. So not a whole bunch of color changes and whatnot. So this would be perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just nine different colors back there on the 15 needle embroidery machine. But you're looking at 81,000 stitches. So as opposed to, let's go back to five by seven size, which is right here. Five by seven, you're looking at 45,000 stitches. So twice the time to stitch this out. Same amount of, same color thread, same color thread changes, but less stitches because it's smaller. So when you start embroidering bigger, when you start embroidering bigger, then you're actually making more uh, work for yourself and adding to the threads and stuff, okay? So... For instance, here is So What Pro. Y'all know I love my So What Pro. Let us merge in, not merge, but open up. Let's go to embroidery. Let's find us a, a, um, a font. I like Stitchtopia. That's my absolute favorite uh, stitch font website. And I know for a fact she has Grace. Okay, so let's go grace number two. Okay, so open that up. And let's pick grace two inches. And we are going to just type in the word test or add the word test. This is two inches. Okay, so there's the T. Let's open this up, our um, info icon view. And it goes straight to our two inch Stitchtopia Grace because that's the font that I opened, which is phenomenal. So let's go to the T, and here's the E, here's the S, and then I'm gonna get super fancy with the last T, and we're going to add the fancy T, and there's the last T, okay. Super fancy. Is it doing the most? Yes, but sometimes doing the most ain't a bad thing. Okay, so let's close out info icon view. And we are looking at right now four different color stops because I haven't joined the threads yet. But at the most, you're looking at 2,263 stitches to stitch this out. Okay. 2,263 stitches. So I'm going to join threads so that we all have just one color stop with this one. And this is three inches by one and a half, two inches roughly, three by two, something like that. So, so not super big, but this will fit in a four by four hoop. Okay. Let's bump this up and do a whole nother one and we are going to go back to Stitchtopia but this time we're going to pick her largest size font into and we're going to go seven inches okay so let's grab because we can do seven inches because we got a 15 needle multi-needle machine and we got a bigger hoop size so we gonna go with the big fonts because I can go big right so let's put the capital T all right, so this is a four by four. 
This is a 4x4 hoop that you're looking at right here. Let's zoom in briefly. This is supposedly 4x4, and as you see, it's way bigger than 4x4, so we need to get a bigger size hoop. Um, let us bump up to... I can definitely do 14 by 10 ish okay? Size hoop on that machine back there. Okay, so this is 7-inch letters. We're going to put the word test on a blanket because we can do it. Just because we can do it. So there's the letter T. Now let's open info icon view again, and we're going to add the E and the S and the T. So here's the E. Come on. I might have added two. Yeah, I thought I did. Delete that. Here's the S. Did I do two again? No. Okay. And then where's our fancy T? It's right here. So here's the T. Okay. And let's slide this over. And we're going to slide you over so that you can join your family. And here's the word test. But this time we use seven inch letters because we can. Okay, so let's bring this in. It doesn't have to be centered because it doesn't matter. All right, let's close this out. So now, because we chose seven inch letters so that we can use a bigger hoop, you're looking at almost 16,000 stitches that you're going to be stitching out now. And again, like I said, you're looking at a minute per 500 stitches so oh okay i see what you're saying see i'm talking to myself 16 divided by 2 is 8 i'm still messing myself up but even still y'all know how i am with math i'm not gonna make my brain smoke because i've been in pain all day and it ain't gonna work whoever does math let me know how many minutes that equates to because i'm not good at math so the bigger the main point that i'm trying to bring out is yes there are bigger hoops out there yes bigger hoops are nicer yes you can do a whole heck of a lot more projects and do more bigger things but keep in mind you need bigger levels of thread because you're using way more stitches your regular spools of thread won't last very long you keep doing the bigger designs and then you have to have bigger stabilizer so buying the smaller stabilizer squares and whatnot you know you need bigger rolls stabilizer i have rolls of stabilizer over there they're like 25 inches long you know they cost more because you you're having to buy about a roll now um and then in addition to that you're spending more time waiting on things to stitch out there's been designs i put over there that take a whole darn hour and some i even had a design that was two and a half hours long because it was a, a really detailed design that was on an apron and it was a photograph of uh, of an image. And it's just, you don't think of that kind of stuff when you say, oh, I want to go bigger. But I'm here to let you know, yes, there's a big difference once you start playing in the bigger leagues. Things get more expensive. Supplies are more expensive. Uh, and it's, this thing eats bobbins like for dinner, you know, stitching out stuff because it's, I'm constantly stitching and doing bigger jobs. You know, I'm going through bobbins, you know, going through spools of thread. I keep three, four spools of the same color so that I know, because I know I'm going through the black. I know I'm going through the white. I know I'm going through the red. I know I'm going through the orange. Those are my constant customers that use those same colors. So you have to plan ahead. But anyways, not saying don't go bigger. Just keep that in mind. When you're wanting to go bigger, not only are you buying bigger as far as equipment is concerned, but you're also buying bigger supplies as well. You're also taking more time because things that you can stitch out super quick on these little machines, once you go bigger, it's going to take a heck of a lot longer. So you kind of have to keep that in mind as well. Um, and don't let that be a huge shock to you. That's the whole point in me going over this so that you can plan ahead and be prepared and know what you're getting into before you jump into that. Because when I went, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, I can go bigger and blah, blah. And then I was like, bruh, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do those little teeny cones aren't going to do very well on these big machines. You got about a big cones now. So where I was paying $2 a cone, now I'm paying nine because I need the bigger thread. 
So at any rate, I did a whole bunch of talking and showing and whatnot. So I'm gonna go back. Uh, Christmas says eight minutes. Suzanne says 32. Felicia 32 minutes. So 30 half an hour uh, to stitch out the 15, 16,000 stitches. So half an hour just to stitch out T E S T. Just to stitch out T E S T is it's crazy because you you're doing bigger letters, which is fine, but if you're not used to that, you're used to stitching out stuff super quick on this little machine. It's not going to be the same on these bigger machines. When you go bigger, it's just not. All right. So wanted to cover that. That came to my mind. Sorry, I was on a little bit of a soapbox, but trying to let you guys uh, not trying to let you go into this not blind like I did. I, I, I don't know why I didn't think of the fact that I was going to have to buy more stuff or whatever. I think they needed to hear that because at times we assume they are aware of these things. They would not be able to sell it and make money. Too much time is in it. That's Ms. Bickham. You're right. You know, unless now if you're going to an event, like for instance, going back to the holiday designs, you're going to, uh, I know here in Charlotte, uh, they have the big show every year, um, Expo, Christmas Expo or something like that. Um, if you're able to get a booth in something like that and you know some folks that will shop there may have pockets that are a little bit deeper, okay, and they won't scoff at, you know, a set of custom embroidered towels that are you know thirty dollars a piece or thirty dollars for the set of two hand towels that can hang in your kitchen or beside their fireplace? I don't know. I don't know where they put that kind of stuff. So you know you can utilize some of those more elaborate uh, designs and stuff for those types of occasions, or maybe it's just some something like, for instance, if you really, 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 really want to impress your mother-in-law or whatever and she loves that vintage holiday type design and you love her very very much and you might want to stitch that or you might want to stitch it for yourself you know i can't see there's nothing wrong with stitching it for yourself if you like that kind of a design you know spending that kind of time the thing is you have to keep in mind that once you start dabbling in those super entrant super type of designs like that one that had the uh where was it that holiday design and then it was like all of those different color changes and stuff you have to understand that your price can't be a dollar per thousand stitches in that instance is that's not going to um uh, translate well that's the point one of the points that i did not recognize i was stuck dollar per thousand okay yeah it's a dollar per thousand but look at this design you lost your mind if you think i'm gonna only charge you a dollar a dollar per thousand how many stitches was in this thing again i can't even remember five by seven the five by seven design the amount of stitches that was sixty three thousand stitches so a dollar per thousand would be sixty three dollars actually now that i think about it that's not a bad translation. $63 for all them color changes and all them spools of thread. I just might have to charge $63 for a hand towel. I'm just saying. So you have to, you know, is this really something that you want to put out there on your table for $63? Do you think it's going to sell for that? Don't know. Don't know. But at any rate, this is is the type of stuff oh that's hilarious y'all i have to show y'all this this is funny where am i at i need to find this so that i can switch you over look at that this is hilarious now see this is the type stuff not this particular design but when i find funny stuff he's making a list and i've eaten it twice <laughs> look at that kind of dog that just don't know better and just still be eating up stuff so the funny stuff is the type stuff that i like um to make money off of and it usually translate well um to wider audiences like these two designs would be pretty decent as far as stitch count and color uh, this one has how many colors the other one had two colors 
what's this one? This one is five different colors. All right, so that's you know a little easier on the stress. This one was two colors, right? Let's see. Yep, two different colors, three color stops. So keep that in mind. Just this was just a, a not so quick reminder to keep that type stuff in mind. Uh, where did you get the white hand towel that you had in your hand? It looked it is waffle weave. Um, and I got it from Amazon. I'd have to let's see. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got it from Amazon. Y'all, I ordered so much stuff, so don't no, don't towels. Don't judge me. I have six orders. Okay, here it is. This is it was a was it a 24 pack or a 12 pack? It was not a 24 pack. So I bought the 12 pack nine times out of ten. When I bought it, it wasn't thirty dollars, but it could have been. But this is where I got that towel from, and I can link this in the description. So I got it from Amazon. Just about everything I get from Amazon. I love Amazon. This just doesn't make any kind of sense how much I do on Amazon. It really doesn't make sense. I single-handedly help him build his interestingly shaped rocket ship so that he could get to the moon. Yes, I did. Uh, all right, so the towels are in the description below if you're interested in those towels. Um, let us see. Really like that design. Yep, 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 yep. For your personal use. <laughs> AJ Rich, talk about it. Kingdom Touches says $1 million is my price for that. I'm trying to tell you, it's a trip. That makes my head hurt thinking about doing it on a single needle. Sheila Cushenberry says, y'all, yes. trying to tell you. you. I mean, we have to think about that kind of stuff. Do you recommend doing one or two and taking orders for more instead of making a whole bunch and not selling them? Elizabeth, that is an excellent question. And what I would suggest is, yes, if you can make one, just for the heck of it, and price it where you think it will sell, that's a really good indication of whether or not you will make money off of it. I'll put it that way. So say, for instance, you do make that towel, that specific towel with, with the Samson gloss on it that had all of those different colors and whatnot. So say, for instance, you did do that towel and you priced it at 60 bucks a towel and you put it on, you know, out there for the world to see and say, hey, you know, this is a designer towel. It's embroidery, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, people buy on impulse faster than they will just looking at an embroidered item. It's interesting how that works. It's like a mind thing. When, especially if a person has money, they want to see it. So that would be something, it's a little difficult to do that, but you would have a table or a display or something and you could have it out where they could actually see it and see the quality of it, then you might would get the 60 bucks a towel. But, you know, aside from that, yes, you can definitely give it a shot to see if somebody would be willing to pay that or not. Um and do a, a sample first, but, you know, it's just stuff to think about. Uh, Sandora, as you said, okay, I would say get the PEA 100 and a sewing machine instead of getting the SE 1900, um, because switching back and forth isn't good for me. That works for folks who can afford to buy both, um, but if a person can't afford to buy both, um, then you know, it, it doing the combination is helpful. It's definitely helpful. Hey, Patrina, how are you? Welcome. Sorry, I'm going back in the chat. Uh, according to the manual, they are personal use only and can't be sold, Elizabeth says. What is, um, what are we talking about? Oh, designs that are pre-installed on P770, can we sell those? No, you're not supposed to sell those. Now you can, if you do the lettering, like you can use the lettering function and spell out something. Yes, you can sell those. But as far as um, the designs themselves, no, you can't. Uh, this would be funny on a tablecloth or kid shirt too. Yes, that would. Yes, that would. 
Um, let me make sure I didn't. I, I, I can't even show y'all all of the designs that I have from. Oh, you're welcome, Lucy Lou. I can't even show you all the designs that I have from um, Embroidery Library because it would slow the computer down if I opened up that folder. Really sad. Hey, beautiful soul. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Oh, yeah, 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 Miss Bickham. That's right. So I also uh, want to mention if you... Oh, shoot. DTC Queen, honey. I'm going to have to ring all kind of bells for you. Um, If you are on Embroidery Library and you do buy designs from the library, they just started their annual uh, Christmas Club, which all it is is you have to sign up for it if you aren't automatically... If you've been in it in the years past, they automatically enroll you in it. But if you are not... A member of it you can enroll and what happens is from now until December every design that you purchase uh, I can't think if it's just the, I don't think it's just the full price design but for every amount of something you spend you get so much in points and the points add up to all the way at the end of the year there is a maximum but the points add up all the way to the end of the year and you get free the points equate to free designs. So definitely check them out for that. But DTC Queen says, good evening. Got a new DTF with the dryer. Because she's fancy. The first that arrived was not packaged correctly. Oh, no. A seller sent another with no issues. I am excited. DTC Queen girlfriend with the dryer. We need to ring the bell for you. Congratulations on your new DTF today! Yes! Congratulations! My hair thing fell out, sorry. Woo! Yes, girl, that DTF is going to be fun. Well, stay on top of your white ink. I am just dropping my ear pieces out, y'all. What in the world? All that oil I put in my hair is backfiring. Um, But yes, DTF with the dryer. That's awesome. Let me know how it goes. Stay on top of your white ink. Keep your white ink shook up. And don't let that machine sit without printing every day. Trust me on that. Do not let that machine sit. Okay? Do not let it sit. All right. So thank you, Felicia. I appreciate it. Tricia, Eve, Hubby, and I just got our second 15 needle red line. What? Color! Yes! Congratulations! Oh man, Tricia. That's what's up. Congratulations. That is phenomenal. Second, girl, you doing it like that? That's what's up. I'm trying to tell y'all. When you have more than one, you can have them suckers going and have one running and hooping the other and hooping the child. Just, I love it. When I'm busy, busy, and the machines are just humming, ooh, it's just, it does something to me. I absolutely love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Galena, I have trouble lining things up and making things work properly. I just keep having a hard time with it. Do people usually figure it out after a while? Yes. And there are some tricks here and there. I was trying to show y'all one but for whatever reason modern um camera back there is not one well i can switch the camera around actually no that's that camera yeah it's not one to work let me switch the camera around actually and i'll show you what um lining up can do okay so i'm gonna swing this here in a second let me make sure i didn't miss something else hey laverne miller how are you welcome and thank you for being a youtube hoop group member i appreciate that can you do a hat on the pea 100 yes and the 770 yes you can we did a live last week i believe and you can um and you can Show, it shows you how we do hats. Lori, you a trip. Share the pound cake recipe. Just send me an email and I'll shoot it over to you. Uh, 
man, I missed a lot of stuff. Okay, so that's where I stopped earlier. Hold on. I mean, I don't like y'all just sitting there looking at the machine. Can I a new machine? Lose archery. Okay, that's... Try to embroider on the backpacks at the Dollar Tree. Um, okay, so with the backpacks, I don't have one up here. But the thing about doing bags and backpacks and stuff like that is depending upon what machine you have, like on the multi-needle machine, that won't be difficult at all uh, because you have this open area here that you can slide the bag up into uh, once you open it up and you can stitch on it. But on the flat bed, single needle machines, you don't really have a way to, I mean, if it opens up pretty wide and you can kind of move, like this is the bag laying flat and it, you unzip it and this is the front and you can take the back after you've unzipped it and kind of like fold it out from up under the front and lay it on the embroidery machine like that. And yes, you can embroider on the, the book bag. Okay, okay. But if you can't flip that backside out of the way, then ooh, that's going to be rough on the single needle machine. Uh, thank you, son, Doris. I appreciate that for announcing I, I try. Uh, new machines are expensive. Yes, they can be very expensive. Son, Doris waiting on Flock from TRW to try to rise. So, holler. Hey, Felicia Storm. How are you? Shirley Scott, what would be a good printer to get? What type printer are you needing, Shirley Scott? Is it for DTF or is it for sublimation? Which one? Oh, Boracua is awesome sauce. She is phenomenal. Yes, she, yes, she is. Uh, let's, see. let's see. Let's see. Making sure if I miss something and you ask the question and I haven't answered it yet, Ask again, please. I apologize because sometimes I get to talk about stuff. And uh... All right. So really quick before I forget, let's go back. I see you always fiddling with your ear pods. They constantly shift on one. They cost so much time to stay in place. True. True. Very, very true. But I also tried... What's the name of it? Uh, my cell phone is uh, Samsung. The Samsung ones, they didn't say. Nothing stays in my ears. I have weird ears. I missed the part about selling the designs purchased from Embroidery Library. Is it okay? To yes. Okay, so eBusy Chris, if you go to their website, um, they let you know on their website that you can... Um, let's take a look at that because that's actually a really good point. And we, it's better in some instances to show because, and then too, I could be wrong, but pretty sure I'm not. So if you go to their website, you can go to help. And nine times out of ten, it's in here. Um, oh, and, and when you uh, come here, they have a lot of helpful stuff on here like resolving shifting gapping sh gapping <laughs> resolving shifting gaping and misaligned stitches tips for stitching complex high stitch designs blah, blah blah they have excellent pointers in here so definitely check them out um where is it oh and this is also the happy hour eligibility and the oh that's his birthday club that's not the um holiday December club. Um, I saw it in here once before, so now I can't find it. How do I change the password? Blah, 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 blah. If a question is not addressed on this page, that'll be it. Um, oh, licensing and use policy. Sorry, it was at the bottom. Um, when you download and or purchase the design, the design remains the property of Embroidery Library. So what that basically means is just because you bought it does not make it your design to turn around and resale, basically. The license, so you are purchasing a lifetime license to embroider the design in an embroidery machine. 
The license allows you and only you to use the design in a variety of ways, including personal use for machine embroidery, use on products made in an embroidery machine that you offer for sale at craft shows, craft fairs, or through personal peer-to-peer e-commerce websites. So in other words, yes, you can use their designs to embroider on things that you put up for sale at craft shows or online. You can also use their designs on products you donate to charity, and you can also use on products that you give us as gifts. You are allowed to edit the design in any manner that you choose, but Embroidery Library will own the copyright in the edited design file. So the edited design file cannot be distributed, shared, or sold, and is subject to the same restrictions as our original design. If you are a business or organization purchasing our designs, you need to purchase one copy of the design for each person who uses the design. All right? So... Oh, and you cannot use their pictures to sell. So. And they also don't want you to use their designs in any media other than machine embroidery. So if you buy an embroidery design, you can't use it to create a vector file uh, for cutting machines or as a pattern for a tattoo. As part of a company logo or other logo for screen printing or glass etching or blah, blah, blah. So to read down through that, they have some really interesting um, regulations on that. But yes, Embroidery Library, you can use their designs on things that you sell. So that was a really good question. Beautiful soul says she got a new baby. It's a Cadillac SRX. <laughs> I don't know if we going to ring the bell for a car. <laughs> that's a big baby. But congratulations anyway, girl, because I know how it is when you get you a new clip. <laughs> she said a, a Cadillac. That's what's up. Congratulations, ma'am. She ragged clean, y'all. She ragged clean. Um, I am trying to make sure I don't miss anything. I am so sorry because I did get away from it. Let us switch over to, and I'm still showing the website. That's not the plan. I'm going to um, forego, I'll check the thing again here in a minute. Okay, let's switch over to this table. Yeah, let's see if we can't get some help with lining things up. Let's do this. And boom, there we go. All right, so we'll see if I can't make this work. Squeeze past. Whoops. Hold on. I had to squeeze past the camera. All right. The tripod, rather. Okay. So, for instance, in lining things up, what I definitely recommend to anybody, especially new folks, um, you you want to get as many things that you can that will help you as possible. Don't make it harder on yourself. You know, make it easy, okay? So, as y'all know, I'm not the best with math, and I need things to be as simple as possible. So, here's my water-soluble stabilizer. I have two pieces. I'm only going to use one per towel. So, I'm going to set this up here out the way. So, say, for instance, here I just pulled a new towel out of the pack for towels, okay? And, yes, this was a 12 pack. And like I said, the link to the towels is in the description below. So to line up a towel, towels are, are fairly simple because, you know, it's a rectangle. And rectangles can tend to be easier to work with. But the same principle can apply to just about anything else we work on. So T-shirts, towels, bibs, um, not necessarily hats because hats are curved. Okay, so hats, you know, it's kind of hard to use a ruler to line up, you know, things on a hat because it's curved, you know what I'm saying? So you would need to probably use the, not tape measure, but the uh, sewing type measure, tape measure, where the tape can wrap like fabrics around the hat. But aprons, it doesn't matter. They, it all, the principle all remains. So at the end of the day, you want to 
get your, for instance, this is a towel. I want to put a design on this towel. So this is not a paper towel design, for instance. I need to determine just how large I want this to be. And I know my five by seven is my limit, so that helps, all right? The first thing I suggest is find the center, okay? So here's a towel. No matter if I'm crooked or not, doesn't matter. We need to find the center. So, and the majority of lining up an embroidery is not 100% exact. The only time you kind of want to be as exact as possible is if you're doing a bunch of duplicates, like for uh, polo shirts for a company and you sell 50 piece for or something like that. You want things to be uniform and the same, but that's a little bit different of a story. Um, you can use a system like the Mighty Boots for that, um, Hoopmaster or whatever. But at any rate, so in this instance, we have our ruler, which I prefer the clear see-through rulers. And we're going to find the center of it. So just ballpark looking at it, this particular towel is kind of, as you see, look, it's not super straight up here on the edge. It kind of comes in a little bit. Who cares? That's just not a major thing. And you can even straighten it up. Some. It doesn't matter. At this point, we just need to get it centered as much as possible. So I'm going to go from the inside of the selvage to the inside of the selvage here, meaning not this smooth white border on the outside, just the waffle weave part. And it looks to be 15 inches, okay? So 15 inches all the way across, so half of 15, I just know is seven and a half, that much math I can do, all right? So I use a chalk uh, rolly wheel to mark my center. And you can barely see it, but that's why I like using the chalk marker. Now there are other things that you could use, such as the heat friction pen, where you can use heat to get the mark out, or you can use um, the kind of pen where you use the spray to make it disappear. It's up to you, but you definitely want to find something that's easily removed, uh, easily removed. But at any rate, so now that we have our middle, notice that the towel is folded almost in the middle, but not quite. So, you know, sometimes you can use the fold to find your middle. I prefer to use the ruler uh, because sometimes just folding it doesn't always equate properly. All right, so at this point, now I know where the center is. I'm going to come up here and I know that my design is five by seven, roughly is the area that I'm going to work. So I want to center this and get a good judge of where I want my design to be on the towel. Do I want it closer to the bottom? Do I want it up a little bit? That's up to you and your customer. Okay, so it just depends on, you know, the design that you're working with. But a decent rule of thumb is most people fold their kitchen towels in half. All right. And then... When they're hanging it on the, like for instance, you hang it on the, on the stove handle, it's going to be folded in half in most instances. And they usually fold the edges in to meet at the middle. Some do, some leave it open. At this point, it doesn't matter because our design is 5 by 7 So I try to keep in mind that this is my embroidery area and try and center it. Uh, if I center it, let's see how that looks. So from this selvage to the fold is 13 inches. Half of that is six and a half. So six and a half, if I take this grid that belongs to my hoop and put it on the six and a half line, this is where my design is going to be centered on the towel. So that's a good rule of thumb. If you're going to be doing more than one, that's giving you a good area. But say, for instance, you don't like it being up this high on the towel, you want it to come down one. Again, up to you. But either way, whatever measurement you decide, like I want mine to be right here. So if I'm looking at that, that's I'm gonna move it up just a smidge, that's five and a half inches. So a full inch lower than where I had it a minute ago for the exact center of the town. I want it off center just a little bit from top to bottom. So five and a half. So you need to remember 
that your design for these particular towels are five and a half inches down so that you can do the exact same measurement every single towel and every design comes out the same. All right, so I know five and a half inches is where I want it to be. There's my little teeny mark there, so I'm going to come really close to that. And I'm going to come across right near it and do five and a half, which there's my mark there. And the waffle weave makes it a little tough to see, but it's there. Okay, so now that I know this is where far up I want it, or far down, however you want to now I'm going to lay this. Now for me, because I am one of those type of people who have a, a complex about things being centered or whatever, I can, I can kind of look at this and tell that this is even, that I don't have to worry about it being crooked once I draw this line across right here. But that's me. You may not be able to do that. So that being the case, what you may want to do is a couple of things. Like, you can use this exact same grid, put it along the bottom of this ruler because it's not wide enough, and see where, like, put it towards the middle and look at how it lines up along the bottom down here. Look at how that grid falls. Does it fall kind of straight along this bottom edge? And if so, then that lets you know, okay, well, your ruler is kind of straight. But if it's crooked, if it's off a little bit, you know, this will help you tell too. Because if I lay it like this, now all of a sudden I see this is going further into the white and coming up. So I, I know it was off. But that's another way to help you keep things straight. But ultimately, to ultimately when you want to make sure that your stuff is straight, draw a line, help yourself. Don't make it difficult. Some people are like, that's a step, that's too much, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, you want to help yourself. Don't make it hard for you. Okay, so now that I have my line coming across here, now I can put this to work the way it's meant to be. Okay, so let's grab our stabilizer. And let's open this up. And I try to make sure that the, the tag is opposite of where the border is going to be. Open this up and lay it out. And now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to try to make it somewhat simple for you to see. But then I'm also going to show it close up here in a second. So the embroidery design that says this is not a paper towel was long this way, more so than wide that way. So I'm going to uh, put my stabilizer lengthwise. Here's the bottom hoop. And there's my towel. So you have tools to help you keep this stuff lined up. Part of what helps is looking at the imprint of the towel, I'm sorry, imprint of the hoop up under the towel and kind of gauge where the center is. That way that helps give you a good basis to start with. But then once you do that, grab your inner ring and you want to lay your die in the ring. Okay. It has grooves all along to help you line up your template where it's supposed to be. Okay, And these grooves are also, as you see, your center. It shows you where your centers are. Even though this one's off just a little bit, but that's what... Nope, sorry, that's not right. Look, you need to be able to read that. That ABC is not only backwards, it's upside down. So let's turn it the right way and flip it the right side. This is how you want to line up your stuff. Okay? So I had it in wrong. But at any rate, I can read my ABCs. Here's my grid. Here's my line right here. You guys can barely see it probably. I don't know how well you can see it. You know, we'll be holding it up because the waffle grid kind of, the waffle of uh, Weave makes it difficult. I can 
see it, it's right here, right? And then my center line is right there. So that's where this comes into play. First of all, that line that I did for the center, I need it to line up with this. So now that I'm looking at it and I go ahead and press it in in the bottom down here, because I'm pretty sure this is too tight for my hoops to fit. Yeah, that's going to be too tight for my deletion in any way. But this gives me a good rule of thumb to see, do I need to move this up some? Because right now, that line is down here and it needs to be up here. So I'm going to have to move the towel, shift the towel up some. So before I shift the towel, I'm going to loosen my hoop a little bit more so that I can make sure I can get this towel squished in there. And now, like I said, I need this towel to come up. So here's my line again. And I'm pressing the hoops together, putting the bottom in first, and laying it across. And now I can see that that line is now lined up with that line. Now I need to find my center line. It goes up and down, and it is right there as well, going up the center. So that's how. You use the grid to help you center your embroidery. Just round. And this thing still ain't open wide enough, I don't think. Nope, it's not. Let's slide everything down, open it up some more. And press this into place. I need to be standing up. Can, all right, you really shouldn't struggle this hard to put the towel in. And of course, I'm going to struggle on camera. So it's not that good. Nope, that's too much. Hold on. Let's just get up. Some more. I really need grips on this thing. Whoops! I knew that was gonna happen. I'm gonna put all my monstrous strength on here and then this is not meant to take this. Monster paper is so bad. But it's almost there. So I'm gonna loosen it some more. Is a groove there, but you can use a flat head to help turn that. There we go. And now we have our towel hoop. Okay. So I can take this off, and now I can see, hopefully, you can see as well, that it's running. Oh my gosh, I just popped it loose. It's running right there. And then there's the center right there. So if I put it back on to make sure it's in place, and because I popped it and shipped it out, it's out of place now. But anyways, that's how that hoop is on. And I'm going to have to come back to that because I made my darn towel shift, and I need to get it fixed to uh, be able to stitch that towel. So, and I can do that on my own camera. Sitting here, looking at you beautiful people and reading the comments. So at any rate, that's doing the towel. What kind of stabilizer I am using is, this is called, this is a water soluble stabilizer. There are a couple of different types of water soluble stabilizer. One type, is the kind that you lay on top of the towel pile to hold it down. Oh my God, I didn't 
didn't even realize it was 11 o'clock. Y'all let me talk too much today. Um, I didn't, so there's the kind that goes on top. This kind of sticker. So you can use this for, they call it badge master. So you can use this to make patches, freestanding lace, stuff like that. It's a little thicker. Um, so I was using this as the stabilizer for the back so that it can tear away once the towel stitches and it washes out the back. So this is water soluble. So once the person who receives the towel washes it, that will disappear off the back after I towel, tear the majority of it away from it. What type of embroidering machine are you using? I'm going to be using the seven by seven, five and a half, five by seven, PE 770 to do these towels. So that's a home embroidery machine. My knees couldn't take getting in and out of the car, so you got the crossover. Oh, the car? Okay, that's what's up. So it's an easier machine to get into. I mean, car to get into, Lord. Hey, Charlene Mitchell. See, especially when you put them in there, the auto connect, they look like the charcoal song a few weeks back. Never miss the beat. That's awesome. Sauce. The beats are nice, but I'm not already invested in these things. And I had to take the other ones back to trade for this. I refuse. Hey, Lady Dr. Delicious, how are you? Thank you for joining us for your first time. We appreciate it. Uh use a rider to use riser to use my grand oh that's smart pj coppage so there is a way you can purchase a riser for the embroidery machine that will get it up off the table and it allows you to slide stuff like book bags in under the machine so that's smart pj coppage i don't have one i've seen them used before um but um that would definitely work Okay, you guys, so I think that's it. I, a beautiful soul. Again, congratulations on the clip, girl. She riding in the new clip. I appreciate you, appreciate you. Um, hey, Cecilia Rodriguez, so you have fun. Be safe in your new Cadillac, please. I appreciate you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, oh, and it's got the automatic white ink star, the DTC queen. Jealous, jealous. I got to shake my own stuff. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. So I appreciate y'all joining us. Hey, Anita Weir, how are you? Sorry, I didn't catch you earlier. Uh, Alpha Mendez, welcome from the Dominican Republic. Thank you for joining us. Felicia says, this struggling exactly why I use the temporary spray and float to watch. Yeah, well, see, and towels are thick. So, yes, definitely I can understand hooping floating a towel i'm stubborn so i hoop them anyways you know how that goes um but that's also a good reason to get the magnetic hoop for the seven five by seven that would work too you can use magnetic for the um towels that would be awesome sauce too strictly facts hello welcome thank you for joining us this evening towels will be here tuesday felicia make sure you post pictures if you do towels and i will definitely post pictures of these towels once they're done, especially that this is not a paper towel. That's super cute. Um, so thank y'all for joining me this evening. Sorry, we did a lot of talking, but I was trying to, you know, let y'all know what you're getting into if you do go with a larger machine. It's not a bad thing at all. It's a wonderful thing, especially if you're getting into it for business purposes and to make money. But the thing is, please understand that it's an investment, okay? Not just in materials not just in equipment but it's also a time investment too because it takes longer to stitch out these larger designs but aside from that multi-needle is definitely a positive goal to reach for it can work for you it worked for me and i am eternally grateful it's like as soon as i got the multi-needle machine business exploded it went from you know a few things here and there to like non-stop because they know you can do heavy duty things you know so it, it was pretty cool to see that expansion and i was told that that expansion would happen and i trust and believe that and it did so but at any rate we appreciate you joining us this evening i look forward to seeing you all next week next um sunday 9 p.m eastern standard time as far as i know let's see what is this this is july august yes we should be fine looking forward to it so 
look forward to seeing you all hanging out in the hoop group on facebook i appreciate you being here and until the next time we see you all what do we want you to do we want you to have happy embroidery thanks and have a good night drop the earpod again ear pod again <laughs> bye uh, it's telling me to go to bed that's all it is go back to bed girl good night